Good afternoon and welcome to this launch of the Liverpool City Regional Music Board. Um, I'm Michael Eakin, I'm the uh, chair of the new board that we're launching today, uh, very proud uh, to be so. And I'm also, uh, my day job is Chief Executive of the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic. And um, I have to pinch myself almost on a daily basis to understand that I'm now heading up an organisation that had a profound effect uh, on me as a teenager. My very first visit uh, to Philharmonic Hall was to see the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra uh, performing Holst's Planets, which is a huge, big piece, and it just blew me away to see and feel uh, and hear the kind of visceral power of a full-scale symphony orchestra in our city uh, performing a great piece of music like that. And not that long after, I think it was my second time at the Phil, but not long after, uh, I went to a now legendary gig given by Deaf School um, in the mid-70s. Um, and again, very different kind of music, very different kind of performance, but absolutely ex extraordinary. And I can remember both of those performances like they were yesterday. <laughs> and when I look back on them, I realise that they they indicate um, both the breadth of musical creativity that we have in this city, that we had then and we have now, but also the power of music um, to transform and change lives, which those concerts and other things I saw as a teenager certainly did for me. We all in this room know the power that music has on all of us um, as individuals um, and as collective audiences and collective listeners. But as well as that, very personal impact, the music sector also is hugely important um, for this city economically, uh, in terms of the social fabric and cohesion of Liverpool and the city region. And it's really to further that power and that position of the music sector and the music industry here that this board has been created. Um, I just want to acknowledge some of the things that happened to get us to this point. Um, when I look back over the last several years, um, one of the first times when a number of us from across different parts of the music industry in the city came together uh, with Liverpool City Council and with the involvement and support of both Joe Anderson and Wendy Simon at the time, uh, we developed what turned out to be a successful bid for Liverpool to become <coughs> the first and still the only English UNESCO City of Music. And I think that process sort of indicated the way we as a sector could work together. Since then, there have been a number of key pieces of work and reports. There was a report by the Institute for Cultural Capital for Mayor Anderson on the importance of the Beatles uh, and the Beatles industry um, to the city's economy and how we continue to further that. There was a report um, brought together by Bido Lito and Liverpool John Moores University that um, really took the voices of the sector itself in terms of what was needed in the city. There was another report from Mayor Anderson by Bob Consulting looking to develop a music strategy for the city. And there was a report by UK Music for Mayor Rotherham uh, which really set out the, the economic importance of this sector for the Liverpool City region. Now what all those reports and pieces of work did were two things I think. One, they provided real hard data that made the case very persuasively for the economic power and the breadth and reach of the music industry in the city region, better than any of us just saying it could ever do. And secondly, they all looked in different ways at what we need to do to capitalise upon um, that strength still further, to take a longer term strategic view really about how we grow um, this industry in our city. I want to acknowledge um, both Mayor Anderson and Mayor Rotherham, you'll hear from them both in a moment, their political commitment to this sector is profoundly important, it's been very strong for many years and I'm really grateful um, to them for that as I think we all should be. The challenge for us now um, is to build on that work and to address practically those things that will help the sector fulfil its potential for the city and city region. Looking at areas like 
education, music education and skills and talent development in the city and how do we make that better. Looking at making sure we've got a really robust and resilient and growing network of venues and we all know the um, real challenges there, but venues, rehearsal facilities, studios and so on. Making sure that music is really positioned as part of the tourism offers, offer for this city and that we are marketing ourselves effectively as a music city. Making sure that we truly capitalise, and I think we've made great strides in this, but there's still a long way to go, around the extraordinary legacy of the Beatles and what that offers us, uh, both in terms of economic impact, but actually also in continuing to support and grow the music sector today. Making sure that the sector truly reflects in an inclusive way the diversity of this city and its communities and is accessible to all and that all talent uh, is able to really be developed. And fundamentally making sure that we are truly growing and contributing to the continuing economic strength of Liverpool and the city region. Now this board can't do all of that on its own, but what it can do is be a point at which we come together, we discuss those areas and we start to map out strategies for taking them forward. And we've just come from a meeting when we've been talking about that areas and looking to create some uh, very kind of action focused subgroups, looking at those themes and drawing on people from outside the board um, to get their views as well. And we want over the next couple of months to really think about the agenda for us and then bring that to a wider, sector-wide meeting uh, later this spring at which we can have some more discussion uh, uh, and, and take them forward. I think it's very important to say that the board is a group of people from the sector, but it's important that we engage the sector as a whole. In terms of who that group of people is, we will make um, that known to you, but I'll just go through the names now, because I imagine most people in the room will know at least one of us. Um, and so a key message that we all have is, if there's anything that's on your mind in terms of how we take the music industry forward, problems that we're facing, opportunities that there are, um, things that we need to be saying to the wider world, then you can speak to any of us. So there is me, uh, Becky Ayres from Sound City, uh, Matthew Flynn from the University of Liverpool, Paul Gallagher from National Museums Liverpool, Kath Hurley from Mostefo, Steve Levine, uh, independent music producer, Andy McCluskey, musician, Hannah McKeelan, uh, an accessibility and in inclusion advocate, Alec Nayak from Milan Fest, Yao Su, Owusu from uh, Culture Liverpool of the Playmaker Group, Craig Pennington from Vido Lito, uh, Barbara Phillips, um, an artist manager of Positive Impact, Catherine Tackley, head of music at University of Liverpool, Ian Thomas, chair of uh, the City Region Music Education Alliance, Anne Thwaite uh, from Arabic Arts Festival, Ben Williams from the Arena Convention Centre, Jennifer John from Sense of Sound, and Chris Meehan from Centric. Those are the people uh, who are on the board at this point. Also around the table, very importantly, we have senior representatives from UK Music, from the Musicians Union, uh, Pete Hooten from the Beatles Legacy Group, and representatives of Liverpool City Region uh, and Liverpool City Council. So it's a mixed group, mixed set of perspectives, very powerful group. Uh, we've had a fantastic meeting this morning, and I think there's huge potential there. Potential to help join up what can be a fragmented sector, to argue the case for music, uh, to ensure that we truly live up to our building as a UNESCO city of music, and in doing so, play our part in ensuring uh, Liverpool's long-term economic <coughs> What a way to end it all. Um, myself and Joe have just found something out about each other. We're both crap drummers, and I've just been around the back there um, trying to learn this new fill. And there's something wrong with my right foot and the rest of my body because it's too difficult, but I will master it. Um, but it's because of our love of music, I think both myself and the Mayor of Liverpool, that we took, I think, the rather brave decision to work together to ensure that we get this thing called Liverpool City Region Music Board. And that's because of lots of things. It's because obviously uh, there's an economic imperative for us to do this. But it's also to celebrate what we're renowned for across the rest of the world. Because music is in our DNA. Um, it's something that I think we can trace our musical roots back.
happen in a major port city that we were. And along with the chills that we have to celebrate, we have the River Mersey to thank for this. It's been our lifeblood since the 28th of August, 1207, when King John gave us the status as a town in his royal charter. And it's because of that river that we got things like um, the rhythm and blues from America and the music from Ireland that gave us Mersey Beat. But I think we all agree we're not just famous for one genre. We've provided more UK number ones than anywhere else in the country. Our rich variety of influences and styles have crafted a distinctive sound and spirit. And we are the UNESCO World City of Music. And in fact, to this day, our music heritage continues to provide the basis for the formation of new and exciting relationships. So I met a guy um, who was the, the mayor of Louisville, so it's not Louisville if you never go to speak to him because he's a big lad and he might take offence to it. Louisville. And he, people might remember that um, black and white photo of the Beatles with the great Muhammad Ali where he's punching towards and they're all in the line of falling. So we had a, a cultural exchange and what happened was we sent six boxes, both from each of the local authority areas, um, to Louisville to go to the, the Champs um, boxing gym and they experienced all of that. And they sent over a singer um, who was known as the Adele of Louisville. Actually, she's not as depressing as that. She's um, really, really good, um, Carly Johnson. And she played at the Cavern. And that's the beauty, isn't it, of what we can do with our musical heritage, the, the very fact that that opened up doors for us and will um, eventually, I believe, um, open up much more than just the cultural exchange, but some um, hopeful uh, investment in the city of Eugene. But music is a big business for us, Michael's just alluded to it. The total direct and indirect spending by music tourists in the city of Eugene, this is from 2016, was £135 million pounds, and the total live music audience in 2016 was almost 1 million people in the city region. And while much of this is focused in Liverpool and quite well, this is our the heart of our cultural um, scene. We're seeing growth in other music sectors in other boroughs, particularly in St Helens and in our borough of culture for this coming year, which is the will. But there are huge challenges that we need to embrace and take on to move forward from a lack of inward investment to displacement of existing businesses in the music industry and as with other industries, the loss of homegrown talent to London. And that's why I'm absolutely del delighted, I'm sure Joe will be, that we brought together such a diverse panel of experts to sit on our music board. And I've spoken to um, another um, fellow MP turned Mayor Sadiq Khan about the impact that doing this had on London and he uh, quite rightly is proud of our nation's political capital. Um, I've told him that we'll see equal success replicated here in our nation, nation's cultural capital. So we've identified five priorities and they are so important. So just to touch on a couple of them, developing the Beatles legacy, Joe was long believe that we don't capitalise and maximise the opportunity this presents to us. And we're not talking about just squeezing 10 more more onto the Beatles, we're talking about real ambition and building a legacy for the benefit of the whole city region for generations to come. Also about engaging and developing new talent, our rich music heritage reaches far beyond the Beatles and there isn't really a genre of music that from our six districts that we have had some impact in the wider country. So from if Peter's here, Peter Hilton, uh, from the farm, the Lars, Coral, Zootons, Half Man, Half Biscuit, Lady John Ellis Costello, Death School, um, The Real Thing, Dead or Alive, The Blue Bradleys, Frankie Goes, Howard, Echo and the Bunnyman, The Lightning Seas, Jenny Mars and mm -hmm. so Black, and this is the rugby bit for me this bit, and uh, not forgetting the fantastic Royal Group for my orchestra. Um, also, I've got Bands now, she drew the gun, Lapsley, and of course Luna, um, who we're going to see again, I think, on stage lately, continue to represent the city region with distinction. Figures from UK Music show that 
17% of music creators were educated at fee-paying schools, compared to just 7% across the population as a whole. And this is what we want to challenge. We want people from working-class communities, working-class kids, to really get the opportunity to reach their full potential in the music industry. And while 50% of children at independent schools receive sustained music tuition, the figure for state schools stands at just 15%. Um, a couple of years ago, I, I took Jeremy Corbyn to a school, Faith Proudly in Everton, where he saw young kids and they were using music in, musical instruments to engage them in the wider curriculum. And their SATs, the thing that they're measured on for education and all sorts of things, had improved exponentially. Jeremy then put that into the Labour Party manifesto and it was as a direct result of that that we are committed to ensuring that every child will get access to a music instrument and I think that will be fantastic for their cultural well-being but also that will improve their educational attainment and that's really what we need to do to use the assets that we have, the um, fantastic diversity of our city region to really push forward and make those gains that we need to catch up to the rest of the country. So, in conclusion, I'd like to once again welcome the board members to their positions and wish them the very best of luck in their efforts to safeguard and grow a vital part of our culture and Um, today is, it is, as Steve said, for me, uh, just about engaging uh, with you, with people that work in, in this particular sector. I've always been a huge fan of supporting culture and supporting our music uh, offer. And, and the reason why I say that is because it's important to every city. Uh, and it's uniquely important to this city because it's probably uh, one of our strongest USBs in terms of what made us European Catholic culture is our music heritage. Along with many other things and many other challenges and things that we have to do, the talent and our history of music and what we've aspired to do, uh, it, young people have aspired to do, following on from some of the greats in this city, is going to be uh, always there, it's always going to be in the heart and the heartbeat of, of Liverpool and, and the wider region. And so, you know, when we look at the things that we've done every uh, single year as we've protected and supported culture and music uh, and the arts and the things that we've done, whether it's working with the Philharmonic and helping them uh, secure uh, the, the building by providing new uh, performance spaces, whether it's supporting our theatres and making sure they the new every man and all of the things that we've done or whether it's putting on uh, events uh, you know fusion uh, the fetch again after last year this year lymph uh, sound city all of the things that, that get done here uh, every single year brings in as steve rightly touched on a huge economic impact to our city whether it's staying in hotels using our uh, facilities our restaurants our bars our public transport uh, it, it's, it's, it's important not just to, to us economically, but it's the heart and soul of who we are and what makes us and, and how we've got to where we are. And Steve touched on you know, sea shanties and stuff, and Lennon talked very famously about Cunard Yanks, now influential day where they tend to bring your country, skiffle and things back uh, to the city. Ironically, uh, with the um, you know, this building in, in which we're, we're in, this is of course Cunard's famous uh, building where the transatlantic and uh, liners used to sail from. So it's, uh, it's important as well that the British music experience is, is based there. That's why we thought it was right to have them. But the board is about what we do uh, well, how we uh, look at doing uh, more of the same in terms of what we do well, but also looking at how we work with each other to complement what we do and spread uh, the message about music and about the inspirational young people that we have uh, in our city and city region uh, across the globe. It's not just uh, here in Liverpool or the UK, it's across the globe. 
because we are a famous brand. And part of the reasons why we are a famous brand is because of that heritage. We talk about the economic impact, we talk about the peoples, and we talk about needing uh, to grow that. It's great that uh, Kevin uh, McManus is going to take uh, the UNESCO music uh, thing forward as well as being on the board. It's great that we're, we're taking the reports that I've commissioned and we're responding and acting on them. But it's about having a strategy, it's about building on where we are now, today, for tomorrow. And that's important to me. Look, you know, I also want to see and make sure that all of our uh, young people in this city, from whatever age, have the ability and the opportunity to develop their music talent. Uh, and that's something that, you know, my ambition is to make sure that probably before I peg it, I want to see a fame school in Liverpool, not Lippe, in terms of as great as Lipper is and it does a wonderful job and I'm not knocking Lipper but Lipper, I want uh, the opportunity for working class kids from our city and the city region to attend and go to uh, a school that develops their talents and their ability and that's the type of thing that we've got to do with the board is look at uh, strategies about how we improve and how we do things not just from a business sense in terms of making us sweat the assets that we have to generate more income to make sure that we grow the businesses off it. But also about how we actually engage with young people, our schools, as Steve rightly said, in education, but outside of that, the theatre schools, through the film and others, to inspire young people as a, with a passion to engage in music and take this city forward with the talent that we know is out there in this city. And I actually say this, and, in the famous words of Mandy Rice Day, which you'd expect me to say it anyway. I don't believe there is any other city or any other region that has that talent in us as we do here, our young people here in the city and the city region. So let's exploit it, let's deliver it, and let's move on because we've got to look outwards, we've got to look at the future, and we've got to inspire and give our young people hope for the future. And that's what this does. Music gives hope. Music gives joy and love and inspiration to people and that's what we've got to develop. So it's great to see you all here. It's great for everybody who's joined the board and I know that we'll have regular updates on, on how we're progressing. But I think there's some will be some great things that come out of this. I'm delighted that we've pulled together such an exciting team and I look forward to it. one of the board members responsible to deliver on what the region needs and from a personal perspective I want to ensure that Liverpool builds on its reputation as a world leading city for music. Liverpool as a world leading city for music was what inspired us to create Sound City in 2008. With the Liverpool City region as the base we wanted to hold a celebration in Liverpool as a global musical powerhouse. More importantly, we wanted to create new meaning for Liverpool as a music city of the future and to offer a platform for the best new contemporary music, not just from Northern England, but from all over the world. We wanted to champion exciting musicians and people with entrepreneurial drive and ambition to show them that they could develop their craft and earn a living from their art in Liverpool without having to move to London or in fact any other city. Since 2008, Liverpool as a place to live and work and to create music has developed and grown. Through our direct interventions with both Sound City and Modern Sky, we have seen companies like Centric grow from being a university project to a world-leading publishing company with offices and staff in Liverpool and across four continents. Similarly, Ditto, from humble beginnings, has grown into a world-leading distribution company who actually relocated their business here from Birmingham after attending South City in 2011. There are venue pioneers like Becky Nick and the team at Constellations and Hinterlands, Johan at 24 Kitchen Street, Liam and the Cosmo team and the Invisible Wind Factory, and not forgetting the lifetime work of Tony Butler and the Zanzibar. Also established regional media brands like Bido Vito and Get Into This, which continue to thrive and to support the local scene. Of course, there are many, many more examples from all other areas of the music business, but these stand as a few leading examples within their field. Since signing the global deal with our Chinese partners, Modern Sky, we have now set up Modern Sky UK in a short space of time. We have cemented our position as the leading independent record and publishing company in the North, 
whose main aim is to develop the career of artists, of artists from the North. Already in our first 18 months, we have a, had a huge international success with artists such as the Slow Readers Club, the Blinders, Spin, T Street Band and Red Run Club, to name just a few of our growing roster of talent. There's not, that's not to forget though, the countless artists from Liverpool and the city region, with their undisputed talent and passion who continue to emerge, such as the Wombats, the Night Cafe, Circle Waves, Thumbvelo, Stealing Sheep, Suzu, Frill Society, Queen Z, and hundreds and hundreds more. This is all testament to the continued creativity, influence, ambition, and inspiration that is alive in the music scene of Liverpool and the wider region. There is still a lot of work to be done, though, to enable more artists to flourish and music entrepreneurs, companies, and individuals to thrive in the city region that they are so passionate about and that they choose to live and work in. The Music Board is launching with an important remit. The safeguarding and protection of music venues, increasing access to music education and supporting the development of talent are all very key areas to focus on and for us to affect action. We have a lot to achieve and importantly we have to be held accountable um, as representatives for music across the city and the region. It's key that as a board that we hear from you, the artists, the music producers, entrepreneurs, companies and individuals and fans. We need to hear what you want and to make sure that we deliver on this and what we have been asked to do. We look forward to hearing from you and working together to truly make Liverpool a world-leading music city.